Russia's invasion of Ukraine is not only radically changing Europe's geopolitics, security and worldview, it also brings huge changes for Russia. And as time goes on, this will become more and more noticeable. In a recent video here on Visual Politic, we told you how the sanctions on Russia are achieving many of the goals they set out to achieve. In fact, Russia is, in quantitative terms, the most sanctioned country in the world. Specifically, 2023 started with 13,600 sanctions and restrictions of all kind on the Russian state, the country's companies, as well as many of the oligarchs close to the Kremlin. Of course, almost 11,000 were imposed after the invasion of Ukraine on the 24th of February 2022. For the sake of comparison, Iran, the second most sanctioned country in the world, has just over 4,000 sanctions and restrictions, while Syria and North Korea have 2,600 and 2,100 respectively. And that is not all. Western economies, and in general most of Ukraine's allies, have made gigantic efforts to progressively get rid of everything coming from Russia. Its gas, its oil, the money of oligarchs, everything except one thing. Supplies from the Russian nuclear sector. We are specifically talking about Rosatom, a huge industrial group owned by the Russian government that, for now, has escaped sanctions. It has been spared for one reason. Right now, what this company offers is much more difficult to replace than hydrocarbons. So despite the enormous efforts Zelensky has made morning, noon and night to pressure his allies to sanction Rosatom as well, so far, he has failed to do so. Ukraine expects EU to include Russia's Rosatom in next sanctions. And keep in mind, we are talking about none other than Russia's state-owned atomic energy company. And that's not all. This nuclear giant is virtually the only Russian company that we can say is truly on par with the best in the world in its sector, whether in terms of technology, competitiveness, costs, or quality. It is something like the great exception of the Russian industrial fabric, a productive environment that is, to put it bluntly, characterized by its inefficiency, its excessive corruption, and a deep technological gap with respect to its Western counterparts. But you can see that this is not the case with this company. It's actually quite the contrary. Of course, the fact that the Western nuclear industry has been battered by the anti-nuclear policies over recent decades has logically contributed to Ross Atom's gain in market share. But now then, what is Ross Atom really? What do they do specifically? Why haven't sanctions been imposed on the company? And could this change? In other words, are there grounds for sanctioning the Russian nuclear giant? What role does this company play in the political, economic, and military fabric of Vladimir Putin's Russia? Well, in this video, we're going to answer all of these questions and just a few more. So, let's get cracking. Putin's Golden Child As most of you already know, the fall of the Soviet Union was followed by a period of several years of deep crisis where a huge economic and industrial collapse was experienced. And obviously, the nuclear sector was no exception, despite the fact that the Soviet Union was a huge power in civil nuclear energy. For example, it was in the USSR that the world's first nuclear power plant to feed electricity into the grid was born. It did this in 1954. The Obninsk plant, with just 5 megawatts of power, made history. But that was only the beginning of a long road ahead. Since then, the Soviets have designed or built more than 60 nuclear reactors distributed throughout the country and the rest of the communist bloc made up of countless satellite countries. In this way, they gained significant know-how and a good reputation, at least until the Chernobyl nuclear accident in 1986. Then, not surprisingly, everything changed. But the fact is that when the USSR collapsed, the entire industrial fabric of the state also collapsed. Some of the traditional industries never recovered, others did, but a much lower standard than their Western competition, and others, on the other hand, were re-established with care by the government. The latter case was precisely what happened with Ross Atom. Vladimir Putin himself made it a personal priority to revive the nuclear industry. To this end, in 2006, he enacted a law that sought to create an entire long-term strategic framework for the nuclear sector. And shortly thereafter, in 2007, Putin himself founded Rosatom as a state corporation. Behind this decision was the Russian government's concern about the widening gap between electricity supply and demand. In other words, with Rosatom, they intended to solve the electricity shortage once and for all, and thus prevent it from continuing to harm the economy. In addition, during the 1990s, Russia was left out of the international nuclear energy market because it did not have a reference producer. To give you an idea, between the early 1990s and the mid-2000s, more than 100 nuclear reactors were built around the globe. Russia was not able to participate in the construction and design of any of them. In other words, Moscow understood that it was missing out on big business. So as we say around here, no sooner said, than done. Ross Atom was launched with an amazing financial boost from the Russian state and with Vladimir Putin 100% involved in the mission. In fact, it is he himself who decides who runs this company and who also makes the most important appointments. 
The fact is that with this company, Russian nuclear energy has once again made headway, and today it is already one of the major international players in the nuclear industry. The fact is that with this company, Russian nuclear energy has once again made headway, and today it is already one of the major international players in the nuclear energy sector. But to be clearer, it isn't enough for me to give you one fact. Of the 53 nuclear reactors that were under construction worldwide in mid-2022, 20 were built by Ross Atom, and of these, 17 were outside Russia. In other words, we are talking about a market share of almost 40%. France and South Korea have also been building reactors outside their respective borders, but they are only involved in a couple of projects each. And it doesn't end there. In many cases, the Russian company is also responsible for the maintenance and supervision of Russian technology nuclear reactors around the world. We are talking about approximately 20% of almost 450 reactors in operation. In other words, we can safely say that Ross Atom, in little more than 15 years of operations, has managed to dominate the international nuclear market, or at least become the most important player in it. The Russians are hyper-competitive. No one in the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, can compete with what they offer. Marc Antoine, Director of the Energy and Climate Center at the Institut Francais des Relations Internationales. Surprised? Well, wait, there is much, much more. We've only just begun. If you think about it for just a moment, the reason why the West has not sanctioned Ross Atom cannot be only its nuclear reactor exports. After all, the United States has no Russian nuclear reactors, and in Europe, nuclear energy has been marginalized for years. And now that it's making a comeback, most of the nuclear technology suppliers are Western or South Korean, not Russian. So why on earth is Ross Atom not being sanctioned at once? What else is in play for this possibility to be completely ruled out for the time being? Here comes perhaps the most interesting part of this whole story. Pay close attention to this. Atoms made in Russia. Financial sanctions, restrictions on technology purposes, sanctions in Russian gas and oil were imposed relatively quickly. However, at the time of making this video, Ross Atom has managed to fend off any punishment or restrictions. And this obviously must have an explanation, right? And it does. This company not only designs and builds nuclear reactors, but also enriches uranium. And although we can find major Western suppliers here, Ross Atom is the world's largest producer of enriched uranium, with about 30% of production and almost half of the world's capacity. In addition, it controls 17% of the global nuclear fuel market. And according to the company itself, 73 nuclear reactors in 13 different countries run on its fuel. And we're not just talking about the former Soviet nuclear power plants either. In 2021, for example, Ross Atom provided nearly a quarter of all the nuclear fuel used by US nuclear power plants. What's more, it is estimated that even in a scenario of supplier switching, the Russians will retain at least 15% of the pie in the United States in the short to medium term. This is because it is a very slow and costly process to specialize in nuclear fuel production at a reasonable scale and price. Clearly, its market share in Europe is not minor either. The Russians provide around 20% of all the uranium imported into the European Union, behind only Niger and Kazakhstan, as well as 26% of enriched uranium. In fact, from time to time, the Russian cargo planes can still be seen in European skies flying to countries like Hungary or Slovakia with nuclear fuel, thanks precisely to the exceptions that were introduced to the ban on entry of Russian aircraft. If they carry nuclear fuel, they can fly freely. But why is this also important, and is it really so essential to keep Ross Atom free from Western sanctions? Well, the truth is, yes, and it may not be exactly what you're thinking. Take a look at this. Strategic Influence Ross Atom is a huge company with a large portfolio of contracts in the nuclear sector. To give you an idea, in 2021, it reported record profits of $20 billion. So we're not exactly talking about a small company. And not only that, in that same year, the holding company, Atom Ergenoprom, that's really its name, in which a large part of Ross Atom's activity is unified, had a portfolio of foreign orders of close to $140 billion to be executed over the next decade. And yes, some of the nuclear reactor construction contracts that swell the huge numbers of projects are in NATO countries. Some of them are even supposed allies of Ukraine. Check this out. Hungary moves ahead with construction of Russian-built nuclear reactors. Despite Moscow's war in Ukraine, works at the Pax plant will kick off in the coming weeks. Hungary's foreign minister said, 
Russia's Rosatom signs new construction contract for Turkish nuclear plant. The Turkish government aims to start operating the first reactor at the total 4,800 megawatt plant before a general election next year. President Tayyip Erdogan has previously suggested that Turkey could work with Russia on the construction of two further plants. So, reactor construction and maintenance is by far the most lucrative business for Ross Atom. In fact, let me give you another fact. The annual imports of uranium and nuclear fuel from Russia by the United States and the European Union are essential, but amount to barely $1 billion a year. Yes, that is a lot of money, but it is nothing compared to the nearly $200 billion that were imported from Russia in hydrocarbons just before the war. And neither does it come close to what Ross Atom earns from its reactor and power plant businesses. So with all this, you might be wondering, so couldn't Ross Atom be sanctioned to prevent it from being able to build new reactors and power plants while continuing to buy uranium and nuclear fuel from them until new supplies can be fully replaced. Well, yes, it could, and that would probably hurt them the most. But there are two drawbacks. On the one hand, taking this step in a market restricted and with few suppliers like this one might make Russia itself willing to sacrifice those revenues in order to leave the West without its nuclear fuel. And this, in the United States and Europe, could cause real supply problems for power plants at a time of high hydrocarbon prices. Then there is another problem, and that is that there are not so many suppliers of nuclear technology for modern power plants. In other words, banning imports of these technologies would probably generate a bottleneck of orders to the civil nuclear industry in countries such as the United States, France, and South Korea that would threaten the world's energy supply. And it would do so precisely in what is expected to be the greatest period of electrification in the history of mankind due to the fulfillment of climate objectives, something that, by the way, we have already talked about here on Visual Politic. So the reality is that, like it or not, the United States and the European Union will have to be very cautious about imposing sanctions against Ross Atom, and that is precisely why Ross Atom has so far escaped unscathed. Now, is this irreversible? Well, no, of course not. In fact, both the United States and the European Union already have plans to boost the production of enriched uranium and fuel for power plants. US redoubles efforts to end dependence on Russian nuclear fuel. The White House is prioritizing development of domestic uranium enrichment capacity and predicted key lawmakers will fall in line so that a fuel manufacturing plan can be in train by 2025. Nuclear included in EU's repowering plan. The European Commission has formally adopted the Repower EU plan, which aims to rapidly reduce EU dependence on Russian fossil fuels. The plan highlights the importance of coordinated action to reduce dependence on Russian nuclear materials and fuel cycle services. But of course, until all that materializes, Ross Atom will remain of crucial importance for its supply. The risk now is that dependence on the West will allow this company to become a sort of bypass for sanctions and divert technologies, supply purchases and profits to finance the military campaign. For the time being, Ross Atom has already actively participated in the invasion of Ukraine, as it is the current operator of the Zaporizh Hazia, sorry, my Ukrainian is a little rusty, nuclear power plant, and also its de facto owner as long as it remains occupied. In addition, the company is acting on the orders of the Russian government in operating this Ukrainian power plant, which is the largest in Europe with a total of six reactors. Since the beginning of the occupation of the power plant, units have been switched on and off at the whim of the Kremlin to undermine the morale of the Ukrainians and prevent them from earning money through the export of electricity to their European neighbours. In fact, this is one of the main arguments used by the Ukrainian government to demand that this company be sanctioned as soon as possible. But as you have seen, even in spite of its collaboration in the war, things are not so straightforward. In short, Ross Atom, rather than being a huge financial lifeline for the Kremlin, which it also is, functions as a strategic political pressure trump card. It is the red line where, unfortunately, in this case, Russia does have the upper hand. But now, at this point, it's over to all of you. Do you think the United States and Europe would do well to put their nuclear energy production at risk in order to sanction Ross Atom? Could the company be Putin's last great strategic asset outside the battlefield? Well, leave us your opinions here below in the comments. And remember, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to all of us here at Visual Politic so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And remember, you can help us grow and improve by joining our community on Patreon. We'll leave the link below. Once again, thanks very much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.